Hi friends! This is Kristen and I am so excited because tonight is once again our book club night. So if you're here then you are here to talk all about every summer after and just in case I actually remember to bring the book with me this time. Yay me! So let me go ahead and see if I can get our guest host, Amber, from Yarn Vibes on. So give me just one second here. Here we can get that request. There we go. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hi. I always have to like look at the bottom with the buttons and like which one is the button to add a person again. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've done this. I don't know. I feel like it's just always like I don't do it often enough to remember it every single time. Right. So I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it changes. I'm sure it changes <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. With all the updates always. I know. That's true. So how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Fine. It's been cool and rainy. Which has been Girl. so nice. <laughs> Did you guys get a lot of that rain that came through? Because you're in Kansas City mm -hmm. area, aren't you? Yes. So I'm in St. Louis, and like it, we got like a all new, um, like all time record breaking rainfall last night. Oh, really? Night. Yeah. I don't like, know that we got that much. <laughs> it like was like the perfect storm. I guess all of the fronts just aligned in just the right way that we ended up getting like. I think the last count was like some, depending on the area, between seven and 10 inches of rainfall. And it ended up like flooding every interstate oh, at some sure. point. It was all closed. <laughs> so, Yikes. like, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Wow. I'm like, it's a good day to stay home. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what did you bring to work on tonight? Um, I am working on the June top, which is like a, um, a very simple tank. It's by Petite Knit. And um, I actually had the yarn, it's, Yay. which is never the case. <laughs> you almost have to go, you just have to go out and buy more. Usually. Right. <laughs> right. Hold it up because it looked really pretty. I wanted to see the colors. It, yeah, it's a very pretty, like very summery. <laughs> Oh, Blue that looks green. really pretty. Um, the yarn is three eight three ninety eight. She's actually a Missouri dyer. Oh, she's in cool. Branson, Branson. So nice. yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice yarn. So we'll see. I'm sure it'll take me forever. It's stocking it, and so then I can. I don't have to look at it. I can just knit, and we can talk. <laughs> just keep it on like reflex mode and yep. autopilot. Yeah. Yep. So do you, you crochet too? Don't you? I do. Yes. You do both. You're, you're, yes. what do they call it? Um, bistitual, right? Yes. I, I guess that's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I go through waves. I tend to crochet more in the summer. I don't know why. I mean, cause I guess I want to do Afghans in the summer, which makes no sense. <laughs> I guess so I can have them ready for fall. <laughs> I mean, at least the timing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, it's funny because it is kind of backwards. You think about it because crochet is a thicker fabric, right? The knit, yep. so it's like it's like the double whammy. Yep. <laughs> oh man, I actually am working on a blanket. Nice. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's pretty. That's a really pretty. Thank hit. you. Yeah, I, I'm pretty yeah. simple when it comes to the crocheting, like granny squares and giant granny squares or half double did you, crochet. Which did you learn first? Um crochet okay yes and then knitting was very hard for me and I was very angry with it for a very long time <laughs> my mom taught me and then like she always says uh, I surpassed her expectations because like now I you know do all I mean I do sweaters and socks and she's just like what happened to that girl that would get so frustrated and like throw you know her right name? so yeah I'm still in the throwing phase um <laughs> I've been trying to learn to knit for like, I don't know, two or three years. And I say that and actively trying to knit. Right. Like it's been like I'll pick it up and then I'll try it and then I'll I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And then I get frustrated and then I throw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Purling for me was the hardest. It was like I could do it when I was with my mom, but as soon as I like got away from her and got home, you're like, wait, I, how's just, that going? Gone. I'm like oh what's going on? <laughs> I 
think the only time I know how to purl is if I accidentally do it, like mess up my knit. Right. You're like, this does not look right. (laughs) Right. One of these things is not like the other. (laughs) Actually, about 15 of these things is not like the other. Right. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I wish I could say that was a design plan, but. Right. Oh, yeah. No, all of my, all of my stuff has some kind of flaw in it. And I just say, hey, it just makes it an original. So. It, It gives it character. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, I'm so glad you could join us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you asking me to do it. Of course. So um, as everybody is logging on here, um, just to kind of refresh, we are here to talk about Every Summer After and um, by Carly Fortune. And this book totally does scream like just summer read. I mean, that cover. Come on. It's so pretty. I, I just want so I want funny. yarn in this color uh-huh. the cover, right? Yep. Um, but before we get into talking about the book, I want to find out more about you. So for those that don't know you guys or <laughs> don't know you, um, would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, your story, and whatever you want sure. to like sharing? Sure. Uh, I'm Amber. I live in Kansas City, Missouri, and I've been married to my husband for 13 years. We've known each other since sixth grade. Um, Yeah, we have no children, but we have four cats. So those are our babies. (laughs) Um, And I am a knitter, a crocheter, an avid reader. Um, I am obsessed with pretty nails. I love to do my nails. I'm very girl. I've been that way since I was in like, I don't know. I look back at like old pictures in like high school and I'm like, man, I was even doing my nails back then. So it's just something that I've always loved. Um, So I dabble in that. Um, I do occasionally sew, but I'm not very good at it. (laughs) That's another thing that gets me angry. Um, Too bad you can't throw the sewing machine. That would be really bad. No, that would be bad. That would be bad. Um, I love to travel. Don't haven't done it in a very long time, but but yeah, um, that's about it. That's awesome. So, oh, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm hoping to, so we moved during the pandemic. Um, we had a very small home, like a 900 square foot home. And I'd always dreamed of dyeing yarn. I have dabbled in it before um, at a friend's house. She has like her own studio. She actually even has like the sheep that she gets the wool from. Like oh, this wow. woman does, this woman does it all. So she taught me how to do it. I fell in love with it and I always said when I had a space that I was going to do it and now I have the space and I finally have set up an area. So I'm hoping to this fall, like start doing that. I would love to do that as like a little side thing, you know, so. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I I can't wait to see what you come up with. I love yarn. I mean, I could just sit and play with it and look at it and touch it and smell it all day. So pretty. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I just nope. it. So getting back to your nails, <laughs> yes. when I was in high school, I used to do my nails like all the time. And now I just, I don't mess with it. Like, I I don't know. I just don't. But when I was in high school and for a really long time, I had, you remember the caboodles? Oh, yeah. They're back yeah. too. <laughs> I'm caboodles years old. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Um, I had like the huge like suitcase like one. Yes. Full of all the nail things. Oh wow. Like I had like just the tools. I had I don't know how many polishes. Like and I had it like divided up like this side was like the reds and the oranges uh-huh. and this color coded. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was a little extra like that. But that's like, and I still do like to paint my nails, but then I'm like, I have, I don't know if this is like a, um, so like a sensory thing where I mm-hmm. like, I, I enjoy picking things. Yes. So I'm really bad about keeping nails. <laughs> yes. Yes. If they start to flake, then I, it's a goner for They me. don't even have yeah. to start to do that. All I have to do is like, you know how like you get the little ridge, like when uh-huh. your nail grows out just yep. enough. I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's such that. a bad habit. <laughs> so gross too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably shouldn't share that on the internet. That's kind of gross. Um, okay, so I want to just cut, touch base with some of the comments that have been flown here. Let's see. Hi, Kaylin. Uh, let's 
see here. Hi, everybody. Hey, Cindy. Cindy says that she's been working on her first sweater for four, of s four simple panels for years now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. some things just go that way. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. You do the best you can and hope for the best. I mean, hey, yeah. you know what? It's always there when you're ready for it. <laughs> that The problem is just remembering where you are in the pattern. I have a lot of projects that I'm like, I need to just... Oh, I know. That's because I, know. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where, like, I have um, stitch markers that I made using, hey, Layla, uh, using Shrinky Dinks. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you remember oh, those? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shrinky Dinks years old, too. <laughs> um, so the, like, I made little things that have, like, the letters on them or, like, the hook sizes. And so that way, That's when I put a whip so into timeout, I just stick that on there so I know which hook it was. Um, and then I try and keep, like, a project planner. That's smart. Yeah. Well, I like that idea. It's smart when it works and I do all of the things, but yeah. it's not when I don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> You end up with like six of the same hook because you've got them all stuck in the pad. Yeah. You're not real sure where it was or, yeah. You know. I think I've like, I lost one um, in my car once because I crochet in the car a lot, you know, mm -hmm. for driving and, yeah, well, you know, we all know how it goes. Oh, yes. Um, okay. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to play a little bit of like the would you rather sort of games. Um, and I always tell everybody, this is really my son's fault because he always comes up with like the weirdest, grossest, oh, no. most horrifying <laughs> would you rather <laughs> that you'll ever hear and like just hammers you with them. And he right. will not let up until you pick one. Oh gosh, you can't <laughs> just say I, neither. <laughs> no, I say no. <laughs> so we're going to go Andrew rules on this and you have to decide. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Because I know you like your nails and I know you like your yarn, mm -hmm. would you rather have new new nails or new yarn? Oh, man. Um, I tend to go through nails more. So I guess probably, probably nails. Because I have a lot of yarn that I'm staring at right now. <laughs> Shocking. I feel like though, like there's they're kind of different price points though, you know, mm -hmm. like oh yeah. So for maybe sure. like two sets of new nails or one yeah, new set right. of yarn or yeah, something. Yeah, because that's like probably that. about the equal amount. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, let's see. Would you rather I've got like a whole list and I have okay. to try and pick the best one. Okay. <laughs> um, live with your least favorite character from a book or live in your least favorite setting for your life? Oh. Live with the character, you said? Yeah, like in your house. Mm-hmm. Oh. I guess probably the character, because I feel like you could at least, like, lock them in a room. <laughs> <laughs> or try to avoid them, you know? <laughs> See, I was going to say I would lock myself in a room, but I like that you just go right for the dark lock, lock and them lock in a them room. away. <laughs> Very telling, Amber. Very telling. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather work with only one color of yarn for the rest of your life or work with only one hook size or needle size for the rest of your life? Um, one, one color of yarn. Because I tend to gravitate towards the same colors always yeah this is an exception this is like so not me i tend to go towards like mustards and like burnt oranges more fall colors so oh, i love those yeah i was just about to ask you what you gravitated towards too so that's it <laughs> <Red -headed. laughs> um okay let me see what else i got here how about a little this or that um garments or accessories which do you prefer to make garments I think I'm like right on the fence. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a lot of both. I have um, so many accessories that, yeah, <laughs> garments it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, and then I'll go back to garment accessories. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather read on the beach or by the fire? Um, beach. Okay. And I was going to say, you don't have to like, 
be weather specific. I feel like, you know, people are going to respond. I want to do it in the beach when I'm asking this question in the summer. Right. Because they're like, oh, why would the heck would I want to sit by the fire in the summer? Right, 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 right. <laughs> Maybe that's not such a great question. <laughs> um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> I do like tea. I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. I will not turn down a cup of tea, but it could be 110 degrees and I still want hot coffee. I just, yeah. I love warm. I like it cold too, but I just have to yeah. have my coffee every day. Yep. You gotta, you gotta get it somehow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, all right. So one last question for you. Um, do you have a favorite author that you would just automatically buy from any new release? Like as soon as they release the book, you're like, I gotta go get that. Um, I, I've recently really become a big fan of Riley Sager. I'm not sure I've read anything. He, he does a lot of suspense. Um, and he, I mean, he's pretty new. I would say within the last five years, maybe not uh -huh. even that, maybe he's pretty new. Um, either that or complete opposite Ellen Hildebrand. I love her. Yeah, I, I just recently, recently discovered her too. So yeah, but she's been around for a while, right? As, I yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Um, interesting. I always like to ask that question because I'm always looking for new. Yeah. New I mean, if you like suspense, I mean, he's not like, you can't sleep at night reading, you know, right. his books. I feel like it's a good a good level of suspense <laughs> where you can read it alone and not like freak out. Not and, so. and still be able to sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Awesome. Well, how about we dive into our book discussion? So now I read this a little while ago. Um, that's the one like I probably should reread these if I can, but I don't always have time to do that right before right. a book club. So if I am missing something, please feel free mm -hmm. to be like, girl, you got that If wrong. I can remember, I am. <laughs> hey, you read it more recently than me. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so again, for those that are just, just hopping on, Kaylin says coffee all day. So she's right yes. there with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this book is basically, it's told in two timelines. There's the present timeline and then there's the past where, she starts, um, our main character um, in the past, I think she starts at what, age 12 or 13? 12, I think, yeah. Yeah, and um, and then she ages progressively until we kind of meet up in the middle, sort of. Um, and basically, she meets this guy when she's a kid at the lake, she's got the lake house, and they are best friends. They both kind of think Maybe there's something more, but they're kind of hesitant, but then they finally go for it. And there's a lot of miscommunication. There's a lot of missed signals. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of angst. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a kind of coming of age summary romance kind of a thing. Um, really, I thought it was a really pleasant book for reading like over the summertime. Like mm -hmm. I, I love a good easy read over the summer. Um, and I know you said that, like, uh, I, I saw a lot of hype about this book, like, all over Instagram. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up. Inst yeah. Bookstagram made me do it. And the cover, yep. because, again, it's gorgeous. Um, it's women's fiction, contemporary. But, you know, for me, and I think that this is, happens to me, like, every time I buy a book or start to read a book that's been hyped up a lot, I... I don't know, like, I feel like lately, it's just not living up to it. And I feel like maybe I'm like being a little harder on it judgmentally, <laughs> when it's like that. Mm -hmm. But so I rated this one at three stars, it was just okay for me. But I mean, I liked it. I just didn't get all of the hype. Um, I think that the it had some pacing issues at times. And um it didn't always hold my interest, but it was fun and it was flirty and I laughed out loud a couple of times, you know, and the husband's like, what is this, what, what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think? What was your um, kind of gut reaction so to it? I didn't read any of the hype because I, I have been like that before. Like <laughs> I'll get these books and I'm just like, 
what in the heck is like, what am I missing? What's wrong with me for not right. liking this? You know, same with movies, you know? Like, and so I just, I've been looking for books that were like, I've been trying to read like just more in the season this year. And so this one just came across. I don't even honestly know where I saw it. It probably was Instagram, but I love the color, the cover, you know, like you said, and I love a good coming of age story. And I wanted something light as well. So for me, I mean, it was it the best thing I've ever read? No, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. I do agree that at times it was a little slow and I think it was more in the past than the present, but I felt like we were more in the past a lot too. I also wonder sometimes if it's because of, I tend to read more at night and I get sleepy. And so then yeah. I, I don't read as much, you know, so if I can get into the story and I'm in it longer than I tend to Enjoy That's a good point. I'm I do the same thing. I read a lot more at night than I do during the day. But like yeah. and yeah, so maybe that was part of my problem as well. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. I did like the the way it was set up though with the before and after and I think the way she had it, the timeline it was like from the time they met and then it like led up to um like the big the big, I guess you would call it climax Showdown. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I enjoyed that aspect of it going back and forth. And I really liked a lot of the like minor characters in it, so. Right. Yeah, I, um, well, I'll get into that here shortly because I think we do some character talk a little bit yes. later. But um, shoot, I had a whole, okay, yeah, it's gone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes back. This is how this, I'm sorry ahead of time. This is what it's like talking with no, me. It's okay. I, <laughs> same way. <laughs> That's because we're caboodle years old. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So, okay. So here's a fun one. Who would you have been more attracted to in high school, Sam or Charlie? Or someone um, else entirely? Uh, uh, honestly, probably Charlie. I tended to like the bad boys, the older boys, you know, and he was just such a flirt, you know, yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, I liked Sam a lot. I liked them both, but yeah, I'd probably be more, I was, I would have probably been more attracted to Charlie. Yeah. See, I would have been attracted to Charlie, but I would not have ever gone for Charlie. Mm -mm. No. You know, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I definitely tended more towards like the, I guess, like, the alternative guys mm -hmm. in high school. Um, mm -hmm. Not, like, goth, but, like, just kind of punkish, you know. Yeah. Call it. But Kaylin says she'd go for Charlie, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I liked Charlie, though. I really did. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't, I mean, I know that, like, at first he kind of comes across as, like, the shallow older brother. But, like, as we, as the book progresses, I feel like you really get to see a lot more of his personality yeah. and learn more about him. And he yeah. was, I really liked him as a character. Mm -hmm. I think he had a really too. good arc. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a relationship, platonic or romantic, that ended in a way that you wish you could get a do-over? Any kind of relationship does not have to be romantic. You know, I thought about that. And honestly... I could not say, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. Like, I, you know, all my like boy, like ro romantic relationships back then were, they ended pretty cordial. I mean, I remember like my first real serious boyfriend was just like one day we both were just kind of like, I, I just kind of don't want to date anymore. He's like, yeah, I don't either. Like he's now my dentist and we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I could not for the life of me think of anything. So I guess that's good. <laughs> Kaylin says yes. So now Kaylin, you know, I'm totally going to be needing to hear <laughs> more information right? on this. Yep. Um, let's see. Percy feels most inspired and creative at the lake, which is her happy place. Do you have a place like that? And yes. what is it? Yes, I have two places. Uh, I have a friend. We have a group of friends that every summer we actually go to the lake um we go to beaver lake in, in rogers arkansas and we just we don't leave for like five days and i absolutely love it it's just time in the water 
knitting and reading and eating lots of food. <laughs> that is a trip I can get behind. <laughs> yes, I love it. And, and, and then every year, my family and I go, my parents and my brother, we go to um, Rainbow Lake, Colorado, so in the fall. And I just, I love the mountains, and we just stay out in the middle of nowhere and... I don't know. I come back like super inspired to just like make for some reason. So I, that's probably the top of my list. So do you like rent a cabin out there or? Yeah. Yeah. We rent a cabin. Um, yeah. And it has a lake. It's like a little resort area. So it has a lake where you can fish and I mean, I don't fish, but it has like a trail around it where you can hike. And so really you can stay there and it has a kitchen and all that. So we don't really go you know, too far. Although we did find a fiber festival. Hey, oh. um, I know <laughs> two years ago, my husband's like, Oh boy. <laughs> We're but it is when we have happened to time it just right. It's like, Oh no, <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at that? Yeah, <laughs> did he believe you that it was totally coincidence uh, or did he think that you had secretly planned it all along? I think he probably secretly thought we'd planned it, but it really did happen. It really was by accident. <laughs> That's funny. It was just meant to be. <laughs> I love stuff like that too. Um, I don't like I, the mountains, I love the mountains, um, hiking and just being outdoors in general. <laughs> Especially yep. by lakes. Like, I'm not yeah. a huge beach person, to be honest. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But... If I had to choose mountains all the way. <laughs> yep. Same. Same. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm always, like, trying to figure out places, like, to go to. Because, I mean, I have two kids. And so, it's like, I want to find stuff that I can do with them that they're going to be mm -hmm. entertained. And, you know, so, like, a cabin out in the woods, that would be a lot of fun. And, yes. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that now that yep. you say that. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I can time that around a fiber fest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll send you the info. <laughs> that would be great. Yes, do. Um, okay, so let's talk about Delilah. What did you think about her? Do you think that she was a good friend to Percy? I feel like she was just like that cliche snotty girl, you know? Um and I honestly had to like, I kind of forgot about her because I don't know that she, was she in the book that much, which is sad. I mean, I know she was, but like, I, I don't know why I like just blocked her out. out. I kind of blocked her out. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's just me reverting back to high school and blocking out the, the girls I, I avoided. I don't know. <laughs> See, I thought like she kind of at first reminded me, you know, like Mean Girls, mm -hmm. um, I got that vibe from her, like, at the very, very beginning. Yes. But as she, got better. as she, yeah, as after they made up or whatever, um, I honestly think that, like, she was always looking out for her friend. Mm -hmm. And, like, I actually think that she turned out to be a pretty good friend to mm -hmm. Percy. Um, like, there was that one line like boys are for fun and like she's talking about her cousin that Percy was kind of dating kind of not dating I don't know what if they had decided at that point but like yeah. boys are fun lots of fun but don't let one stand in the way of your greatness mm -hmm. and I thought that was really cool that you know she would come back and say that especially considering like you know she's talking to her friend about her cousin right yeah that's <laughs> so, true yeah you know I thought that was kind of cool I yeah. liked I liked her a lot. I think she had a good arc as well. Yeah, the ending, I mean, I know we won't talk about that right yet, but I mean, like, I was happy with how that played out and, like, that she was still there. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, I want to see, hang on one second before I, I want to just think this out before I ask this question and make sure mm -hmm. I'm not going to spoil anything. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, okay. Chantel, I think, was the name of her friend in the present day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of thought, so, okay, we were talking about the dual timelines a bit, and I definitely liked Percy in the past timeline. I did not like Percy in the present timeline. In the mm -hmm. present timeline, I found her to almost be completely stunted. Mm-hmm. Like, she stopped 
evolving <laughs> after, after that one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I like she really that. treated her friend Chantel like crap. Mm -hmm. Like I was really disappointed with that. Like mm -hmm. and never really did anything to apologize. I mean, she I think she did finally apologize, but it was kind of like, oh, sorry, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I mean, she was constantly like checking in with her and but she was just leaving her hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Just ignoring her. Like not even a, Hey, look, I'm fine. I'm processing. Right. I made it. I'm alive. I'll talk to you as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I can't talk about it right now or something, but yeah, I don't know. I, that was the one thing that like kind of rubbed me the wrong way, which was part of my, another part of my problem with it is like, especially because, with books like this that are a coming of age story, mm -hmm. there's supposed to be a good character arc right. for the main character. And I feel yeah. like she went like this. She went up and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kaylin says she felt bad about it, but didn't respond. To yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, great that she felt guilt, but do better. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, so at this point, I don't have anything else that's not spoiler content. Did you have anything else that you wanted to hit on that's um, not spoiler related yet? No, not that I can think of. I mean, I loved, I loved Charlie and Sam's mom, Sue. Yes. I thought she was a great character. Um, you know, I want to be Sue when I grow up. Right. I know. She was just such a loving, like, she always just seemed to be there. Yet, you know, she was just working her butt off, you know, constantly. Right. I don't know. She raised good boys. So, <laughs> yes. And I'm like, teach me your ways, Yoda. Because, like, <laughs> I actually was trying to, like, thumb, like, you know, um, highlight some of her, like, conversations that mm -hmm. she would have when she sat the kids down for something or another yeah. and I'm like ooh, ooh I need to save that for when the kids are teenagers <laughs> like, right <laughs> I mean she just was involved and very excited I mean even with with Percy herself you know it was like Percy was her daughter almost right. you know I mean like cheering her on when she was swimming and yep. so yeah yep I agree Layla says she loved Sue as well yep. yeah she was a great character mm -hmm. I was um I, I wish we'd gotten a little bit more of her, but mm -hmm. I think that's just me because I liked her so much. Right. I so. think a lot of people did though. So maybe the yeah. author will do a book on Sue. I don't know. <laughs> we could have like a prequel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It could happen. Yeah. Early fortune. If you're listening. Right. <laughs> just <not>. an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, then let's hop into spoilers. But before we do, and in case you haven't finished the book, hang on one second. I have the, um, I always like to announce the next month's book in case okay. there's people. Yeah. But it's on my iPad here, which is taking forever to unlock. Okay. So next month we are going to be reading. Can you guys see this? Is it like totally mm -hmm. awful? So next year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. And I'm super excited. I'm I'm listening to this one on an audiobook on Chirp right now. Um, I just started it yesterday, I think. Day before yesterday. My days are running together. Um, and I'm liking it so far, but I'm not very far into it. So um, I am going to be, that's our, I'm sorry, that's our August book. But this is July, so that's next month mm -hmm. is August, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so August 30th is our book club night for um, for next year in Havana. And um, it's the same time, it's always 7 p.m. And if you need to watch the recap here for once you finally finish this book, if you haven't finished it yet, then you can do that because otherwise we are going to get into spoilers. Okay, so here's hoping that if you're still around and you're still watching, you're okay with spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question for you, do you think that Charlie always had a thing for Percy, just like his brother? Or do you think that it was a moment of weakness that led, him, led to him sleeping with Percy? I think that it was just, I don't think he really had a thing for her. 
hot personally. I think he was just a big flirt, you know. Um, right. I definitely think it was a moment of weakness. I almost wonder if he was always getting on to Sam about opening up and like sharing his feelings and basically just saying, you know, you're going to lose her if you don't do something, if you don't take action. Um, <clears throat> and I think maybe he did that to kind of prove a point to him too, maybe. I don't know. Like maybe they were fighting. I don't know. See, I got the feeling like you were saying, like he was a flirt and that was like almost his default. But I also got some vibes that like as the past ten past timeline um progressed that he did actually end up developing feelings for Percy but he was kind of respecting his brother's mm -hmm. first dibs kind of a thing mm -hmm. um Amy says I think he pursued Percy I think that like I think that he was just kind of waiting to see what happened and like when it all kind of blew up i think that you know he kind of just stepped in yeah. and was like well apparently my little brother can't get his head on straight so we're just gonna you know do that yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know let's see um so kaylin says we asked when he we asked uh for the three summit <laughs> yeah <laughs> The three, let's not say threesome, Kaylin. I think that uh, implies a little. Oh, yeah, he did say that. Oh, oh he did. Right. He did. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my gosh. about that. I think he, he was curious at that point. I think you're mm -hmm. right. Um, he was with oh, that yeah. other girl, right? Yeah. And Cindy says that she thinks the author mentions Charlie's attraction to her throughout. Yeah. Like, I, like I said, I think that like he always had a thing for her, but I think he was, uh, you know, respecting his brother's first mm -hmm. dibs. Layla said, I felt like he had a thing for her. He always made comments when she was around. That's he true. Did. And Kaylin says that Charlie knew that she was a catch. Totally. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think, you know, kind of pivoting on that point in the present timeline? So obviously we know that it's Charlie that called Percy to to let her know that Sue had passed away and um, they hadn't spoken since, right. you know? Um, so do you think that when she reappeared and everything that he still had a thing for her or um, like in the present, or do you think that at that point it was really just friendship? I mean, I personally think it was just friendship. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but especially when knowing that he went and told Sam, you know, like what happened and she didn't know that, you know, and that he had told Sam, I don't know. I feel like he really was rooting for them to be together. I think so. He too. wanted, he wanted her back for Sam. Yeah, I think so too. I, I definitely think that that's, I felt like it would have been really easy though for them to all three fall back into those same roles that they mm -hmm. had before you know where charlie is being like psh, 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 to sam yeah. like you need to get it together and, yeah. you know um but yeah like i feel like i i really did like charlie i think mm -hmm. that he had a really good arc but i do almost feel like there might have been still something there because oh. he never settled down yeah that's true he didn't no so yeah, because he didn't bring a girlfriend or anything, right? He was single, whatever. Yeah, right. And he seemed all too eager that it, that she could be his date to the funeral. That's true. Yeah. So oh, hey, Callie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Callie says, I think he still did because he seemed to still be hurt over her reaction in the scene about the panic attack. See, that's kind of what I was thinking oh, too. Yeah. Like I, there were still some vibes there that I was mm -hmm. feeling. And Cindy says, I think he purposely called her so that she would be forced to see Sam. I think he was being a good brother and knew they belonged together. I think that's definitely, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that's definitely um, his motivation. But I do still think that, yeah, I totally think that he wants Sam and Percy to be together. Yeah. But I also think there was still a vibe that he had for her mm -hmm. still. So, which that's tough because then it's like, poor Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> So, um, okay. So how did Percy's betrayal change your opinion of her or did it? 
I mean, obviously I was mad because I'm like, you don't like this boy. I mean, I get it because Sam was not giving her what she needed. Um, and, it, and, and honestly, she probably thought it was just a way to get back at him. And I'm sure as soon as it, I mean, obviously as soon as it happened, she regretted it. Um, I was a little annoyed <laughs> because like you said, she really didn't grow after that, but hopefully now that they're back together, she can work through a lot of that, those issues. Um, but yeah, I think that, I don't know that I sympathize with her. Yeah. I think like, I, I can understand, but like, I just feel, I don't know. I don't know that I want to necessarily sympathize, but I can, mm -hmm. I can see her. I can understand what drove her to it. Yeah. And it's kind of like this moment of, you know, frustration and hurt and pain. And we all do things that are stupid or hurtful to oh, yeah. people we love when we get super emotional. So yeah. I, I was actually a little bit more annoyed with Charlie in that instance. For going through it. And yeah. Yeah. Because he should be able to see after knowing them so well that, you know, there was no, it was not something that should have happened. Like if he really right. wanted to pursue her, he needed to wait until she had dealt with all of her stuff. <laughs> and knew that she wanted, you know, and let her like work out those feelings on if she really wanted to be with him or not. Which, right. I mean, I never really got the vibe that she was, I mean, yeah, she mentioned, they mentioned that she thought he was attractive and stuff, but I think they got along, but I just felt like it was more of a. The Sam and Percy show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let's see. So Amy says she was very naive and never grew up after that. Preach. Um, <laughs> I couldn't decide if it was a moment of insecurity or if it was malicious. I think it might've been a little bit of both. Both. Yeah. Um, Kaylin says knowing the whole story, I felt bad for her. Charlie was more stable. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I think they were both pretty stable, to be honest. I just think that Charlie was more vocal. Um, but yeah, I was definitely mad at Charlie that he went through with that. <laughs> Amy says she also let things happen to her instead of taking charge and making things happen. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I could not agree more with that statement. Mm -hmm. Um, and Cindy says, I think she was thinking that Sam was ghosting her once he went away. So she didn't believe he really loved her. So Charlie was there and making her feel special. Yes, I agree. That is what her motivation was. And I, and for that reason, I can understand why she did what she did, but I still find it slightly like, you know, like I'm just, even if that's the case, and you're still obviously in love with Sam. Why would you go and sleep with his brother? Unless mm -hmm. it's, you know what I'm saying? And again, that Charlie went through with it. So, but you know, it is what it is. They both end up fessing up. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, there was a line in there though, that said, uh, betrayals don't cancel each other out. They just hurt more, which I think that that was a really, not yeah, just right. not just about like this kind of betrayal but like about anything mm -hmm. in general like just because mm -hmm. you get hurt by somebody it's it's important to remember that you know just because it might make you feel good for like a second but ultimately it's not going to make you feel better at all in the long run right so right. um do you think that her betrayal was forgivable i mean yeah i do i, I think it would I, I think Sam had a long enough time to like deal, like knowing that his brother had told him, like, I think he had all those years to work through it. I think that if she had told him and he hadn't known that they, they wouldn't have been together. I don't think he would have been able to process yeah. that. And, and I think that that time apart, like really helped him like get over it, you know, and see his weaknesses. Um, and like, see how, you know, what he, how he acted kind of like played a little bit apart. I wouldn't, I'm not going to, I don't want to blame him, but I mean. No, but I mean, there's two, it's not just, 
those things can, like I feel like you know it's not just one set of circumstances usually there's something else going on yeah. too so yeah. if he's not trying to be communicating to, with her or anything like that then obviously she it's like ghosting like yeah I mean all he had to do was say all those things that he said you know like I cannot talk right now like this yeah. is what is happening Essentially, he turned her into Chanel or Chan Chantal. Ch yeah, her name Ch Chantal. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. He did the same thing to her, and then she ends up doing it to her friend. Yeah, the present. yeah. That's so, true. I didn't even think about that until you were just starting to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's see. This is a really good discussion tonight. <laughs> um, so let's see. Layla says that she agrees with Cindy and that it was disappointing what she did. And Callie says, I felt so sad for Sam that Charlie was her first everything. So Sam was still her first for sex. Yeah. But Charlie was her first kiss. Um, what else was Charlie first for? Oh, no. He, that, she hadn't slept with Sam yet. Because they didn't sleep together until like after like the funeral, like the night of the funeral. And then afterwards, that's when she told... Are I'm, you sure? I'm what about sure. that whole textbook scene? I'm pretty sure that... Hold up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else chime in. <laughs> I swear I thought there was like that studying scene and yeah, I thought they did. Okay, wait. Um, so, um, But they like, I think they said when like the present, they're like, are we really doing this? Oh yeah, you're right. And then afterwards, she said, somebody says, she says in the future, she and Sam never had sex. But they did other stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, so. Damn it, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> that is disappointing. It, yeah. I must have, like when I read that, cause it said like sleep or something. And I must've missed that line in the present timeline because yeah. <laughs> well, I think up until, I think I was like you though, until that moment in, in like the present when they actually did, I thought that they had from that scene you're, you're thinking of. Yeah. So. Which yeah. was pretty hot by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My study yeah. sessions were like that. <laughs> they weren't. No, no. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that stinks. Oh, yeah. they slept, but, <laughs> slept, not slept. but not slept. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so funny. Oh, that's a bummer. You know, and I feel like so much. I mean, I feel though that part of that. Yes, I'm mad at Charlie, but like I'm also mad at Sam because, dang boy, it's like my grandpa used to have an expression. He would say, "Shit or get off the pot." <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Charlie was telling him the whole time, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also, probably not something I should say on the internet. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So what – we touched on this a little bit earlier. But what do you think of Percy as a friend to Sam, to Delilah, to Charlie, to Chantal? Sean Chan. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. I'm really sorry. I, I felt like she was pretty loyal, but then I mean, I hate to say that this, I don't know. I mean, like the more we talk about like how she was talking, like treating Chantel and then like <laughs> how she, how she spoke to Delilah, like that was. And then didn't speak to her and never apologized. Yeah, never that was up, like, ugh. So I was glad that she, I was really happy to see that she went to her in the end. Like that, that actually made me very happy to have that closure. Um, and Delilah was super cool about it. She was, she was like, it's about time or I've been yeah. waiting for you or, you know. Yeah. So I don't know that she was that great of a friend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. Like I, I I didn't I don't hate know. her as a character by any means, but I don't think I'd be her. friends with her. <laughs> no, but yeah. <laughs> um, so real quick, how did you feel about the epilogue? Like aside from that little tidbit, because that was the epilogue, wasn't it? 
or was it? Oh, with her and De her and Delilah. Oh no, yeah. Was that from the epilogue, or was that just from the last sure. chapter? Um, mm. I I enjoyed from the, the epilogue. epilogue. I liked being able to see like how they said goodbye to Sue. Um, on the lake, which is perfect. Um, I mean, it was a little cliche, her asking him to marry, but I mean, I don't know that it was in the epilogue. It was. Okay. Um, it's the very beginning of it. Oh, oh no, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not looking at the epilogue. I'm looking at chapter 18, winter okay. 12, year, 12 years ago. Okay. Mm, no, wait, hang on. Okay, yeah, no, that's the not not the epilogue. So yeah, they did the Sue's ashes, and I liked yeah. that. Um, I also kind of liked that they didn't. She didn't just like sugarcoat their relationship, mm -hmm. like that. It was like, you know, here it is, and I don't know. I, I, Yes, Amy, I agree. I just, I got sidetracked because I read Amy's comment. She doesn't think it was necessary. And honestly, I really don't either. There were things that I liked about it. Yeah. I don't think that it was a necessary addition. I did like the, that we got to see what they did with, um, with Sue's ashes. I like that. Yeah. Um, there was a little bit like, I like that they alluded to how she's, they don't always get along. It's not exactly a happy ever after. They mm -hmm. have their, it's like a real relationship, but I almost also felt like I was conflicted about that point because while I appreciate that, because like no relationship is, is perfect. You know, you're mm -hmm. gonna have disagreements and um, you know, about anything really. I mean, you might just disagree on the direction to go to get to the store or something, you know, like, and they haven't been in each other's lives for so long. Right. I like that aspect that it's not just a happy ever after that they do have these moments, but I also kind of feel like, well, like what was like, unless you're really going to go into more detail and spin another story off of it, what's the point? Right. <laughs> like, right. I don't know. So I was torn on that one, but yeah, I, I agree, Amy. I don't necessarily think that it was really necessary. Um, I don't know. Thoughts? Anybody else tired of time in? <laughs> I guess really the, the only thing I really liked about it was the the part about Sue and seeing that they still had the house and you know that everybody was there celebrating her. You know, and the boat. Yes, and the banana boat was still there and all that. So, and I do I do follow this author. I just after I read it, I started following her, and she does live where she at, at in Barry's. Oh Bay. yeah. I read the author's note about that. Yeah. And I honestly, so I'm glad you brought that up. I, I think that that is one thing that this book did so, so well. is like you can feel her love and appreciation for this setting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, think I felt like I was there. Like, exactly. You know, the little, their restaurant, like I could just see, she just did a really good job of making yep. me feel like I was at the lake. Same. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did. That was, and that I was reading in there. I was like, oh, so she actually lived up mm -hmm. there. And like, she yeah. wrote this while she was up there. Yeah. Because she did it during COVID, I think, yeah. if I remember right. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Um, Kaylin said, she, Kaylin, you enjoyed the epilogue. Is that what you're talking about? Callie said, I like that she proposed instead of expecting him to propose a second time. That's a really good point. I forgot about that. I forgot he even proposed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because when he came back, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Keep in mind, this was her debut. So the epilogue may lead to another book. That's a good point. True. And it's right. True. Maybe Charlie will get his HEA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. I would, I would read that. Mm -hmm. Give me more Charlie. Definitely. Well, cool. Yeah. Was there anything else you can think of to discuss? Um, not that I can think of. 
No. I feel like we hit a lot on this. Yeah, we did. I, <laughs> I Yeah, I, I definitely liked the book. I don't know that I saw the same amount of the... Uh, um, I didn't think it was as great as it was hyped to be that, you know, was the reason why I was excited to read it. But mm -hmm. I did like it. And mm -hmm. I definitely thought, felt like the summer, like the setting really lent itself to summer yes. as well. So... <laughs> Well, cool. Yay. All right. So next month, August 30th, we are going to read Next Year in Havana by Chanel Cleeton. And um, so August 30th at 7 p.m. And Amber, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yes. It has been so much fun getting to know fun. you yes. and play with yarn together. Yes. <laughs> Find out all about each other's caboodles and... <laughs> Show our age. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, everybody, make sure that you guys check out Amber's account. I will link all of her. Um, I will link her account here in the caption here on Instagram. If you're catching the replay on YouTube, I'll put all of her links in the description box. Um, if you are on Instagram or are just online, you can find all of her links that are also on my blog post for this book. So, um, that's linked in my profile on Instagram if you want to find that there too. So yeah. So thank you guys. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for thank talking. You. This was such a great conversation. I had so much fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.